Republicans on Capitol Hill reacted to Tuesday's surprisingly large Democratic gains in Virginia, New Jersey, and elsewhere around the country, and what those results could mean for next year's midterm. Senator John McCain said, quote, unless we get our act together, we're going to lose heavily. But many of his Senate colleagues weren't so sure. I don't think it was any surprise uh, that the Democrat won the, the election over there. Um, I think that probably what surprised people was the, the margin. You know, how much the president played into it is just going to be, it, you know, the, the pundits are going to debate that. The Democratic Party in this election was more energized, looks to me like, than the Republican voter. Why that is, I don't know. Um, A lot I, of them I are was, saying it's because of the president. Well, I, you know, maybe, maybe not. Are we seeing the president potentially be a drag on his party here? <laughs> I don't know. Um, got a hearing to go to. Is the president going to be a drag on Republicans running next year? I don't think so. I don't think so. He, actually, I think, if anything, if he had gotten more involved in these races, they might have turned the other way. This is a typical cycle. The question is whether or not we produce a result and reverse that trend next year. Are you worried about next year? No. I like a good fight. Uh, that last person you heard was Senator Tom Tillis of North Carolina, who also said on Tuesday, quote, We've got to be rhinos, Republicans in need of outcomes. That's something House Speaker Paul Ryan echoed in an interview yesterday morning. In Virginia, um, New Jersey, elsewhere, what is your, does that change your reading of the current political moment and of the urgency surrounding tax reform? It doesn't change my reading of the current moment. It just emphasizes my reading of the current moment, which is uh, we have a promise to keep. We've got to get on with keeping our promise. If anything, this just puts more pressure on making sure we follow through. I adore Ed Gillespie. I'm, I feel bad that he lost. Uh, but I think it simply means we've got to deliver. Joe. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I actually, I, I don't. I don't read any of that as negative. I, I, I think Paul Ryan is exactly right. They have to get things done. This has been a do-nothing Republican Congress. They've controlled all of Washington. They've delivered nothing. I don't know that that played, uh, played uh, really big in Virginia and across the country in these statewide races. I think, and we're going to have a guest on later on today, Patrick Ruffini, who, who has said that we pay too much attention to people mm -hmm. that are down ballot. We look at their characteristics too much. Somebody suggested in his Twitter feed that a bag of mulch just won the governorship <laughs> of Virginia. I think that's a little harsh for Ralph uh, Northam. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point was that it really did all flow down from Donald Trump. He has offended two thirds of Americans. He's offended uh, women. He has offended a lot of independents. He's, He's offended. He's offensive uh, in general. People. I mean, come on. And, Around the world. And that's it. They, well, there is no come on here. I'm not, I'm not debating you. I'm, I'm saying Donald Trump was the cause of the tidal wave, he was the earthquake. That caused well, we'll 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 just say a uh, Willie that caused this tsunami, and you know those Republicans, I you, know, you didn't expect them to come out and trash Donald Trump, and most of them just were politely brushing away the questions. But there's no doubt behind the scenes, and I'm sure Heidi can tell us this. There's no doubt behind the scenes, Republicans are fretting because they know unless they are in a dark, dark red district in 2018. This is going to happen to them. Yeah, I don't think the blinders are so big based on people I talked to yesterday in the Republican Party that that was representative of what we just heard on camera from some senators of what the party is feeling right now. There's no way you could watch, Heidi, what happened on Tuesday night, not just at the governor's level, but all the way down the ballot through the House flipping in a historic way, what happened in Maine with the expansion of Medicaid benefits and not see some concern over a president who's polling at 35 percent and who hasn't gotten anything done. And I think this just puts a lot more pressure on the tax bill that we're going to get a peek at today. Yeah, if you are a member like Barbara Comstock, or Pete, who is actually my congresswoman in Virginia and is sitting in a Hillary district, or someone like Peter Roskam in Illinois, you woke up in a pretty cold sweat. Why? Because this really wasn't about some democratic model that won here that you can beat and maybe I can game this out and be a rhino and win. No, if this repeats itself in 2018, members like her are toast. There is no model for how you run against this. This, this was 
a wave. And you have a lot of people claiming victory today in the Democratic Party, the moderates, you have the liberal progressives. That's because everyone was re represented in a wave, which is what this was. The White House yesterday insisted the Democratic gains had nothing to do with the president. A person familiar with the president's political operation called the results unsurprising. And when asked about the fear level for the upcoming midterms, said, quote, 2018 is a long ways away. Now 2018 is as far away as 2016 is in the past. Still, the president tweeted yesterday to mark the anniversary of the 2016 election, writing, quote, congratulations to all of the deplorables and the millions of people who gave us a massive 304 to 227 electoral college landslide victory. Joe, let's see who may, who, well, who's still standing in that picture. Mm. Well, we'll, we'll we will we will see next year. It, it yeah. may be a little different that picture. Um, but um, Harold Ford, uh, we brought up this point yesterday that after the 2016 loss, everybody was focused on Hillary Clinton. It was all about Hillary Clinton's loss, and that's what was wrong with the Democratic Party. We're still having people talking about the divided Democratic Party. But if you wanted to know how sick that party was, you looked at the thousand legislative seats, state legislative seats they'd lost over the past seven, eight years. It's the same thing with the election yesterday. You can talk about Ed Gillespie and what type of campaign he ran all day. That's not the story. The story is that the Democrats were down something like 63 to 37. I don't know that those numbers are exactly right. And they came storming back. And again, it's that tidal wave that can only be explained away by one thing, Donald Trump. Mm. You know, I listened to, I agree with, agree with the way you've characterized, I listened to some of the House members yesterday, including one from Virginia who said this race was not nationalized. In fact, it was. I mean, the Republicans have not accomplished a lot in Washington. It certainly played into, I think, voters' minds. And then Trump himself has been, as we all have known, such an objectionable and inflammatory figure politically that it's hurt them badly. Democrats, though, should not overread this. You can look back over history and look at uh, when the New Jersey and Virginia governor's races have gone one direction, Democrat or Republican, and what has happened. It's slightly mixed. It, showed, it shows that when Democrats did, I think, most recently in 05, they were able to gain a majority. So the recent history suggests strongly. But Dr. Northam, we're now soon to be Governor Northam, he fit the state. Here's a Democrat who supported George W. Bush two times for president. It's unclear to me if Democrats in the leadership in the House and Senate, if given the chance to have chosen a nominee in Virginia, would have chosen Dr. Northam. I think the message for Democrats is that blue dogs, moderates, liberals, progressives, it, take, it takes both wings to fly. So to be successful next year, remember, it's only been one year since he was elected, Donald Trump was elected, as Mika said, and so much has changed. So much can change again for the better or for the worse for the Democratic Party. My, my, my urging of them, of my own party, is stay focused, continue to pick good candidates, and work with the president where it makes sense, especially on taxes and other things that will benefit the very voters whom we have to win back come next year and obviously 2020. You know, um, it, sometimes it, it comes down to basics, and we say this all the time uh, on the show before elections, and it is obvious, uh, but it's obviously the reason why people win. It's just like blocking and tackling wins you, uh, you football games. It's turnout, turnout, turnout. And you can look and see across the state, Ed Gillespie did, did fairly well with Republicans. Those ads that were offensive to a lot of us, that actually, unfortunately, brought a lot of Republicans home. If you look at the polling, just Mike Barnacle, more Democrats went out to vote. More Democrats stood in line longer. More Democrats called their friends. More Democrats took their friends to the voting, uh, the voting booths. More Democrats were engaged than Republicans it was, it was just because of a great turnout. And if you look at next year's elections, it's going to come down to turnout again because the Democrats, they still have a tough uphill battle if you look at what's happening in the Senate. Joe, no doubt about that. There's absolutely no doubt about that. You saw that in the numbers and the percentages yesterday uh, in every place where they voted. But back to basics, I mean, one of the basics that we have to measure here, uh, if you walk around any place in this country, there's a level of both exhaustion and embarrassment yeah. with Donald Trump. 
exhaustion because yeah. of the tweets multiple times a day, embarrassment because I think a lot of people sit and think, is this the kind of behavior we want from the President of the United States? We saw a clip of the President at the top of this show talking about congratulating China on the fact that they're doing for their people what he is unable to do for our people here. They're taking advantage of us because within moments of his assuming the presidency one year ago, he immediately rescinded TPP, <coughs> the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which was a terrific boon for trading for the United States of America. That's gone now. The Chinese and the Russians are going to dominate the Pacific Rim because we've withdrawn. Right. So you've got that. Then you have the reality. People pay attention in this country. And people pay attention to things like the proposed tax bill. They call it tax reform. No, it's tax revenge, if you look at that bill, if you look at the elements of that bill. So people are sitting out there in the suburbs and the cities, and they're thinking, wait a minute, state and local tax, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to put that on our, on our tax returns. Uh, you know, high medical costs, that's right. going to be taken eliminated. Student interest loans is going to be eliminated. That's the problem <laughs> the Republicans <laughs> have. That's it's, the problem they're living with. That's the problem that's going to drown yeah. them. Uh, the, the bill, Mika, it, there are some portions of that bill, that tax bill, that are just absolutely inexplicable. And that's the sort of thing they have to pay for. But if we want to go to the inside game here and, and want to see how the election's impacting Donald Trump, members of the House and Senate who are Republicans are going to be less likely to follow him off the cliff. And also, a tweet like he did uh, right after Ed Gillespie had lost and yeah. obviously could have used a little moral support from the president. A tweet kicking him the second he was down hard saying he lost because he didn't bow down to me enough. That's remembered by members in Congress just like that tweet and just like his comments talking about the mean GOP House health care bill. The, the, this is scar tissue. Yeah. It adds up. And when you see somebody running and trying to kowtow to you as much as they possibly can, uh, and you still get kicked because you lose by the President of the United States, yeah. it's, it's, well, for first of all, obviously it's classless. Also, it's just horrific management. It makes them less loyal. Well, and, and it's mean, and it shows how quickly he'll turn on someone transactionally. And I think of the Trump supporters that we know, uh, many who are close to you, and I just I wonder how long they can actually hold on to protecting someone who consistently lies, lets them down, and embarrasses them. At some point, there's just going to be a breaking point, especially if they're let down in their wallets. Uh, Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.